Hi everybody, Pastor Jay Stillinger here from Abounding Grace. So glad that you've taken time to, to watch this video uh, with us. And uh, I wanna encourage you. This is a time of encouragement. As many of you know, our world, all of you know, our world, our nation is going through a great unprecedented crisis right now with the coronavirus, the COVID-19 virus, and uh, the economy uh, doing what it's doing. Uh, we need encouragement. One thing we do not need to do as believers in Jesus Christ is we do not need uh, to panic. We do not need to enter into fear. Uh, we know that 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse uh, 6 says, For God has not given us, or verse 7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so you and I as believers don't have to fear what's going on in this world because we've got a God who is our strength. He's our fortress. He's going to bring us through this. In fact, uh, what I want to share with you this morning, I've entitled basically, Basically, God is able and will bring us through. He's going to bring us through this situation. Better days are coming. I promise you that as we trust in God, uh, we can be assured that better days are coming. If uh, Abounding Grace is your church, uh, we want to be a blessing to you and help you. And so please reach out to us if you need us for anything. You know how to reach us if you're a part of Abounding Grace. And we want to uh, uh, be whatever we can be for you, to pray with you or whatever it is. If it's in our power to help you and bless you, we want to do that. So reach out to us, contact us. If there's a need that we can help with, we certainly want to try to do that. And then also, for those of you that are a part of Abounding Grace, uh, we really do need your tithes and offerings. Even though we're not able to come together and meet uh, for a couple of weeks here, uh, we still need you to give of your tithes and offerings, and then even perhaps above your tithes and offerings so that we can have extra uh, to minister to the needs of others that may not have enough. And so, uh, in order to do that, you can uh, go to our website, which is, of course, www.agcc.church. That's agcc.church, and uh, look for the tab in the upper right-hand corner of that website that says Give, and uh, you can give online that way, or you can text to give as well. Uh, and the number for texting to give is area code 518-670-4334. Again, to text to give is 518 670 Four three three four, and we really appreciate it. We need to keep on going. We need to sustain everything and even go beyond that because again, uh, not only do we need your tithes and offerings, but we also need anything extra that some of you that have abundance you might want to give, so that we have the ability to help others that may contact us uh, who are in need. And so we are grateful for that. If you've been blessed by this ministry over the years, uh, I believe that uh, you know it's good ground, good ground to sow your financial seed into. And we, again, uh, deeply appreciate that. I have a word for you uh, that is going to bless you and encourage you. I want to build up your faith. We are believers, which means we are people of faith. We believe the word of God. And so if you have a Bible or a Bible app, if you'd open up or look at Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, I want to read a passage of scripture. I'm going to be referring to several different scriptures here. Again, God is able and he's going to bring us through to the other side of this storm that's going on around us in this, in this world. And so I want to just encourage you with that and show you some things from the scripture. Matthew chapter 9, beginning with verse 27, we have the account here of two blind men. And it says this, beginning with verse 27 of Matthew 9. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Notice their response was, Yes, Lord. In other words, Lord, yes, we do believe that you're able to do this. And then in verse 29, Jesus said this, Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that you tell no one. So we see in this passage of Scripture concerning these two blind men, they were helpless, they were in a hopeless condition. Uh, they had gone to the priests, and the priests, of course, were not able to help them. Their friends were not able to help them. Uh, in fact, uh, we know that historically uh, that there had been no known time in that period where God had ever healed the blind. He had never healed the blind at all. In fact, another blind man uh, uh, that was uh, confronted in John's Gospel, chapter 9, been blind from his uh, mother's womb, uh, Jesus touched him. He was healed. The Pharisees got upset about it and questioned him. And one thing that he said was this, and it's in John 9 and verse 32. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. And so this was unheard of. In other
other words, what these two blind men were asking of the Lord Jesus was impossible for man. Impossible for man, but yet, but yet possible for God. And, and you know, we look around us and, and man really has no hope uh, aside from God. Uh, man doesn't have the ability. I hope though that you are praying for our leaders, praying for our uh, president, the vice president, others that are leaders, our governor. Be praying for those in authority. The Bible commands us to do that and believe God that he's going to give them wisdom because they can't do anything without him either. And so we need to understand that. Uh, but we also see in this passage that the two blind men had faith. And faith is such an important ingredient in all that we do and in all of, of what we're uh, uh, living this life. We're to live by faith according to the Word of God. Believers in Christ are supposed to conduct our lives, live our lives by faith. Jesus asked them, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Their response was yes. Their response was not maybe or uh, hope so or anything like that. Their response was yes, we do. We do believe. And you know, Hebrews 11:6 6 says, that without faith, it's impossible to please him. And then it says that those who come to God must believe, number one, that he is, and number two, that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So God exists, believe that he exists, but also believe that he's a rewarder of those who seek him. And so, praise God, we also believe not only does God exist, but Jesus Christ, who is God, is our healer, our deliverer. Uh, you know, even with this coronavirus, thank God, Jesus is our healer. He's our great physician. We don't have to fear any kind of virus as we put our trust in him. He, again, is able and he's going to see us through uh, this situation. Remember to stand on the promises of God. Uh, by his stripes we are healed. Surely he bore our sicknesses and with his stripes we're healed. Isaiah 53, uh, 4 and 5 is so essential. Galatians 3, 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, uh, having been made a curse for us. And so understand that we're redeemed by the blood out from under the curse of the law. And that curse is found in Deuteronomy chapter 28, beginning with verse 15, going on verse 30, uh, 68 rather, and all the curses, and it includes sickness and disease. But you're redeemed from it by the blood. Stand on the promises of God. Stand on healing because it does belong to you according to the word of God. It doesn't matter what man's traditions say. It doesn't matter what your denomination may say. If you're a part of one, uh, what matters is what does God say? What does the word of God say? That is a part. That is a what we stand upon. Amen. And so, you know, according to this, there's three absolute facts that I want to convey to you uh, concerning this and concerning our situation here uh, in this world and in our nation. Number one, man is limited and man is finite. There is uh, no doubt about that. Man is limited. He cannot do any and everything. Uh, and so uh, it's important for us to remember that, but not stop there. Moses knew that. In fact, in Numbers chapter 11, verse 14, as he's leading the children of Israel out of Egypt, he said this to God, I am not able to bear all these people alone because of the burden is too heavy for me. Moses understood that. The children of Israel understood that they were limited and they were finite in, do, in Numbers, rather. Chapter 13, verse 31, it reads, we are not able to go up against this people, the Canaanites, as they came to the border of the promised land. We're not able to come up against these people, for they are stronger than we are. Solomon understood this when he was made king in 1 Kings 3, 9. He said, for who is able to judge uh, this great people of yours, he says to God. And so over and over again, we understand that people are finite, people are limited. Uh, but uh, you know what? There's something that we can learn from that. And the second fact is this. God is unlimited and infinite in grace and power. And so in the midst of the fact, knowing that you and I are limited, that you and I uh, are, are finite, we are not able to do everything, but yet we serve a God who is able, he is infinite, he is full of power, uh, he is well able, and I believe that he's going to bring us through this situation. We're going to come to the other side, we're going to look back, and we're going to rejoice in what God has done. You know, it's been said, and many of you have probably heard this before, that every Every great testimony comes out of a great trial. And so this might be a trial right now. And, and indeed it is. But yet we're going to have testimonies of how God broke through in the midst of this as we use our faith in God, as we uh, uh, exercise confidence in what his word says and, and realize that he is unlimited and in his infinite grace and power, he's going to bring us through this. We may be weak, but he is strong. We may be finite, but God is infinite 
infinite. We may be limited, but God is unlimited. And uh, we might not be able, but God is always able. And I believe that when it comes to his promises, not only is he able, he's also willing. He wants to bring you through to the other side of this situation. Whatever situation uh, you might be facing, he wants to bring you through it. Let's be encouraged by that. Let's trust God in the midst of this. Again, this will come to an end. This uh, coronavirus is going to come to an end. We declare it dying in Jesus' name. And the economic situation is going to come to an end. Better days are ahead as we trust Him. But remember not to trust in uncertain riches, but trust in the living God. Trust in Him and not in your finances. We can learn so many things uh, from this situation that we're facing right now. We can learn to uh, be maybe more prepared for another event similar to this. Uh, we can learn that uh, God brought us through this and so our faith can get better and greater because He brought us through this. The next time, uh, we're going to be more prepared in our faith and trusting God as well. Uh, there's a lot of good things that we can learn uh, from all of this. And so let's use this as a uh, as a learning opportunity uh, to do better in the future, to be prepared better in the future, and to trust God uh, better in the future as well. You know, in Daniel chapter 3, uh, many of you know this story, uh, but boy, it's applicable for our day today. It talks about the three children of Israel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. You might feel like you're in a fiery furnace today. You might feel uh, like you can't, you don't know what to do. You might be at your wit's end and all these kinds of things. Uh, but again, we want to encourage you today. Notice what it says concerning uh, these three Hebrew children, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in uh, Daniel 3, 17 or 15 through 17, and then verse 29, it says this, and, and this is Nebuchadnezzar warning them. He says, now, if you are ready at the, this time, you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made good. But if you do not worship, Nebuchadnezzar warns them, if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered, and said to the king. Notice what they said. And they spoke faith. They spoke confidence in God. And they were in dire straits. I mean, the situation was very bad. And, and you know, you think about this. They were about to be thrown into a fiery furnace. And the record shows uh, that the men who threw them in eventually, they ended up dying before they even, just by approaching or getting closer to this fiery furnace. That's how hot it was. Uh, so as it goes on with this, it says that this is what the three young men said. O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from this burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand. O king, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the golden image which you have set up. And they're saying basically this, God, we believe that God, or, or Nebuchadnezzar, we believe God's going to deliver us. But you know what? God, Nebuchadnezzar, even if he doesn't, we're not going to serve your gods. This was, this was faith uh, speaking, confidence in their God speaking. And you probably know the rest of the story. If you don't, I encourage you to go back and read it, uh, that they were thrown into that fiery furnace. And Nebuchadnezzar said, did we not throw only three men into that fiery furnace? Then his servant said, yes. Then who's that fourth man? He is like unto the Son of God. And so God intervened. I want you to know that no matter what fire you might be going through, that fiery trial, God is with you. And if you're a believer in Christ, he's in you. And so praise God, He's going to bring you through. Amen. Just trust in Him like they did. And just uh, uh, know that he, His presence is there and, and He is able but also willing uh, to bring you to the other side of this situation. Uh, how about Daniel? Another account in this same book, the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 6 verses 20 through 22. Uh, we know that Daniel was faced with a similar situation where he would not, uh, he would not cease from praying to his God. And so again, uh, we know the story, it says in Daniel 6, it says, and when he came to the den, this is uh, Belshazzar afterwards, he came to the den where he had had Daniel cast in. It says he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths uh, uh, so that they have not hurt me because I 
I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. And so Daniel was delivered from the lion's den. And the beautiful thing about this was the king realized that Daniel's God was the living God. And you know what? As God brings us through situations and trials of various kinds, as we get through and, and people are aware uh, that we have a living God, a trusting God, it's going to be a testimony uh, that they realize they need God as well. They need Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior as well. And so let's believe uh, that during this crisis, God's going to use it for people to reach their end uh, and realize, you know what, I need God. And then give you opportunities and pray for opportunities that God's going to give you opportunities to share your faith, uh, to share uh, about Jesus and what Jesus has done for you. Uh, and let's believe that the harvest of souls is going to come into the kingdom of God as a result of all of this. Amen. And so as we look at some other examples, I mean, uh, there are just so many and God is able. Abraham believed God when it looked like it was impossible for him to have a child. Abraham believed God. Uh, the angel of the Lord declared to Abraham one time when Sarah laughed about the idea of having a child in her old age. The angel said to Abraham, is anything too hard for the Lord? And I can ask you that question. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything that you're going through too hard for the Lord? Obviously, the answer to that is absolutely not. Nothing is too hard for him as we trust in him. Other examples, Jeremiah prophesied this. It's in Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. He said, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and unstretched arm. There is nothing too difficult or nothing too hard for you. And then God affirms this in Jeremiah 32, 27. It reads, Behold, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And then Jesus testified himself in Luke 18, 27. He said, the things that are impossible with men are possible with God. We serve a God of, of possibility. We serve a God who will change your impossible situation around to possibilities. Because again, there is nothing too difficult for him. There's nothing uh, that is too hard uh, for our God. And so praise God. I want to encourage you uh, with this word. Now, we've already mentioned the fact that you and I are limited. We are finite, yet number Number two, the second fact is what? That God is, is infinite and he is infinitely full of grace and power and unlimited. Now, the third fact I want to mention to you is this, that without God, we can do nothing. But with God, great things can happen. Great things can happen. Thank God we have God. Without God, obviously we can't do anything, but with Him, you've got Him. If He's your Lord, if Jesus is your Lord and Savior, the Bible says if God is for you, who can be against you? And so uh, the scripture goes on and also says in Romans 8, 32, that in Christ or because of His love, we are more than conquerors. Uh, praise God for that. We are more than conquerors. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And so again, I want to encourage you in these days. Uh, to not be moved by what you see. Faith is not moved by the circumstances. Faith is not moved by what you see or by, by what you feel or any of those senses, those five senses. No, faith is only moved by the Word of God. Faith stands on the Word of God. Uh, faith confesses the Word of God, speaks the Word of God, and, and trusts that God's going to bring you through each and every time. God is able, the Bible says, to save to the uttermost those who come to Him. Uh, Hebrews 7.25, God is able to open blind eyes, as we saw in another example, Matthew 9.28. Uh, God is able to cleanse the leper. God is able to provide water from a rock and manna from heaven. God is able to make all grace abound toward us, uh, 2 Corinthians 9.8. And God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could possibly ask or think in Ephesians 3 and verse 30. And so God is able. He does great things, even though we we are limited and, and finite. God is unlimited and infinite. Praise God. And so what happens when you put a finite man together with an infinite God? Well, praise God, miracles happen. 
Healing happens. Deliverance happens. All sorts of things happen because we trust in our God. And so praise God. I want to encourage you with these words today. You're not going to go under. You're going to go over because the Bible says that those who trust in him, they are the head and not the tail. They are above only and not beneath. Greater is he, 1 John 4, 4, who dwells in you than he who is in the world. Praise God. Again, I want to encourage you with these words. And so, uh, praise God, it's been a joy to be able to come. And uh, I pray that it has encouraged you. Look over some of the scriptures that I mentioned to you and and just build your faith. Uh, The world has a way of feeding us fear and and getting us fearful. Let's not be those that panic. Let's not be those who are fearful of, of what's happening around us. But let's be a light shining in this world and showing the world that there's a God that's greater than any and everything uh, that's going around uh, in this world today. Praise God. Listen, if you've been blessed by this, remember to, uh, to give, prayerfully give to this ministry as we continue to go forward. We're ne- never going under. We're going over. Uh, but also, I know that God uses people uh, to give of their tithes and offerings. And so we appreciate that. Again, go to our website, www.agcc.church. Uh, check out that Give tab and give that way. Or our text number is 518-670-4334. That's 518- 518-670-4334. If it's been a blessing to you, of course, you can also send in an offering and uh, we'll use it in a godly way. We'll use it in a way in which God would have us use it. And you can find our address also, our mailing address on our website. Well, that's all for now. And again, God bless you. We love you. And uh, if we can be of help to you, let us know. And if it's in our power to do, we certainly want to do it. God bless. If you've been blessed by this message today, please prayerfully consider giving to help support the ministry of Abounding Grace Christian Church. No gift is too small, and we'll agree with you in prayer that God will continue to bless you richly for your support. If you'd like to give online, go to agcc.church. The link is found below, and look for the green tab near the top that says Give Online. Or you can send your gift by mail to the address also below. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos coming in the future. And thank you so much, and God bless.